The Shell Helix Grid, and this is how they'll line up for race two. It's reverse grid, remember, so Steve Reed will start from pole position alongside him. Last year's round winner, Stephen Richards, Dougal McDougal third, Paul Romano, Rodney Forbes in fifth, Tyler Mecklem sixth, Stephen Ellery seventh, Jason Richards from New Zealand is eighth. Yeah, the grid's really mixed up this morning. If you look at the right-hand side of the Shell Helix grid, you'll see those yellow boxes. That shows where they qualified for the start of racing, so you get an idea of how they've moved up and down through the field throughout the weekend. Championship leader Jason Bright is 17th. John Bow, Jason Bargwana, Russell Ingle, Paul Morris, a good run yesterday. Paul Radish, you stormed through the field. He'll be 22nd. Glenn Seaton, Garth Tander. Now keep in mind these positions toward the back are as a result of the full reverse grid. These are the guys who did very well yesterday. Mark Scaife, Craig Lowndes, Stephen Johnson, the race winner. He'll start out at 27. And then behind them, all the guys who did not finish, including Marcus Ambrose with his broken gearbox, Todd Kelly, Cameron McLean was in trouble, Tony Longhurst, and John Faulkner as a result of a big crash even before race one started there will be a compulsory pit stop same as yesterday race one it'll be for tires only and then later today in our broadcast we'll bring you race three with two compulsory stops one for tires another for fuel 25 laps of the journey for this one 50 later today interesting the air temperature at the moment just seven degrees noticeably cooler than we've had all week the track temperature is actually 10 degrees and uh, yesterday in racing conditions remember in darwin we had Temperatures in the 50s for cabin temperatures yesterday around 19 degrees. Check out the Ford race analysis on the Canberra Street Circuit. 25 laps the distance, 100 kilometres, 32 starters. The pit compulsory pit stop is between laps 3 and 18. That's when the leader has completed three laps. The window's open. And Stephen Richards, of course, last year's winner. He starts off the front row here. Remember, we spoke with John Faulkner before and the Smash Repair team did an enormous job overnight to try and repair that car. Well, they haven't quite made it. He's not going to make this second race, but he will be ready, hopefully, for the third race a little later today. Now, it's not going to be interesting to see here, Neil. We saw a brilliant bit of tactics by the Gibson Motorsport team yesterday, leaving Lowndes out there for a couple of laps on clear track, allowed him to jump from seventh up to second. I wonder if anyone's learnt any lessons overnight. But I think the thing about that is, though, Mark, it could have gone horribly wrong if the safety car had come out. He'd have been... Well, the thing is, if, if you're going to be conservative and you don't want to take the risk with the safety yep. car, you can end up getting stuck in that pack that all pits together and go out on the track together. If you're, if you're prepared to take a few risks, quite often it can pay off. Steve Reed, normally we'd run through the in-car cameras for you at this point, but because of some of the lingering fog, we're not going to be able to bring you some shots until we can send our chopper up and our pilot can see where he's going. <laughs> it does help. It's going to be a fascinating contest, this Stephen Richards. Very well placed, though, to be off the front row of the grid. On the warm-up lap, word through on the radio that Stephen Johnson cycling some heat into those front tyres. You've got 60 degrees in the front, 48 degrees in the rear, so he's worked his brakes very hard on the warm-up lap. Temperature in the tyres will be the critical thing for the first lap, lap and a half of this race. Look for locked brakes and mistakes. The green flag all clear. We are set for a start. Richards oh, crawl sideways. Reed up the inside. McDougal into third. A huge pack, an angry pack at the back. All trying to make position. Richards on the outside. Reed goes through to the lead. Forbes side by side. Well, look at this. Absolute bumper to bumper. Door handle to door handle stuff as they try and shuffle 32 cars through that incredibly tight turn one. Battle here. Dougal McDougal muscling through on the inside of Stephen Richards. As the fields try to sort themselves out through the GMC flip-flop, it's Reed, McDougall, Richards, Romano's yeah. in there too. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. It'd be, it'd be totally amazing with the guys coming through from the back on cold tyres if they get through the first lap without uh, something going wrong. Well, I think we're going to see a few tricks in strategy here once that pit window opens at the end of lap three. Oh, and if you were at the back of the pack and uh, you're obviously going to be very fumbled up for lap speed, the call here would be to get in early and then go back out onto an empty track so that you're making good lap speed. And when all these front runners eventually peel off, the world will open up in front of you. There's Lowndes, Harry, Stephen Johnson yesterday in a tremendous battle. Mark Larkin there had a problem on Friday with an accident. Oh, look at this. Reed, McDougall and Stephen Richards, a three-way battle heading down State Circle for the first time. Steve was struggling for grip on that opening lap. He's got a little bit out of shape coming through the GMC flip-flop. Car's getting into the groove now. He's up there in second behind Steve Reed in the Landsvale car. I wasn't sure. I think I saw something hanging off the back of Seaton's car. The Spon back of the, like, the, the lower sponsor and the lower spoiler at the back of it. Probably going to be a bit of bat body damage on these cars in this opening lap as the fast guys try to get their way through the slower ones. Look how close it is here. Car's bouncing off the kerbs, nose to tail. 
Everyone looking for an advantage on this hectic opening lap. But Conville was sweating all over the back. Oh, look at this of uh, Rodney Forbes. And there's a glimpse there also of Jason Richards. A quick plug for those of you watching our telecast in New Zealand. Tickets go on sale yeah. tomorrow. Someone's got a problem up against yeah. the wall. Just finish that comment quickly. Tickets go on sale for Pukekohe. We're going to New Zealand for the first time the championship series goes offshore. If you're going to go to that event and it's going to be huge, grab some tickets. They are on sale at Ticket Tech New Zealand from tomorrow. So the order at the moment, Steve Reed, Stephen Richards, Dougal McDougal, Paul Romano, Stephen Ellery in fifth, Tyler Mecklem in sixth. He would be used to that. Rodney Forbes, Mark Larkham. Jason Richards and Paul Wheel rounds out the top ten. This is encouraging for Richards and the Kiwi team because they've had a tough start to the championship year and he's in ninth at the moment, well in contention. Steve Reid doing a good job hanging on here. This demonstrates how tough it can be to pass on this circuit. There's his teammate, I think, Cameron McConville. So him dropping out, coming through the forward sweeper. Problems there. A bit damaged as a result of that first lap shuffle. That's been very costly for Cameron. Into the pits oh, on the opening oh, lap. Oh, oh, look at that for a locker. Carbon oh. copy of Craig Lowndes there yesterday oh, in the Gibson Motorsport car. Had a huge locker during his qualifying lap. So Stephen Richards, got to watch these tyre temperatures. Great lockups on this high cambered circuit. Let's have a look at the Shell Helix replay. And watch Mark Scape at the back of the pack there. We'll see what happens here. Apparently there's a bit of squeezing going on. One of the Kmart cars rubs the wall. Oh. And look at Scaife getting stuck into the back of Glenn Seaton as they go down towards turn one. It's Biff and Barge everywhere. They're virtually stuck. Oh, look, oh, look at the amount of elbowing and hitting oh, going the front, on there. Look at the damage. Front of the HRT Commodore has taken a pretty decent whack there as he's gone into the back of Glenn. Notice that one of the Kmart cars gave the left wall a big rub as well. Down here in the pits with Cameron McConville. This is a lengthy stop. He clipped the wall just running onto the pit straight here and he's better tyre on. They've switched the engine off. This is not looking good for the Lansvale Smash team. Yeah, that's not surprising when you look at how close and competitive things were on that opening lap. Fast cars mixed in with slow cars. There was always going to be a bit of body or suspension damage and unfortunately McConville has paid the price. Look at Dougal McDougal here now trying to find a way past Steve Reid. The veteran's done a good job off that opening lap. Very easy to lose your cool with all that pressure. He was running very defensively over the back of the course and Richards was obviously pushing hard under brakes and locked them before. Now here's damage to Murphy. Uh, and was it Greg that was up against the wall heading down into turn one? Perhaps it was. He's getting out of the car. Oh, wow. So Rob Crawford there, the team manager, telling Murph to get out. She's over. Major damage, terminal damage to Murph. As you can see, it's not been a good day. So the order at the moment, Stephen Richards, Stephen Reid, Dougal McDougal, Paul Romano still in fourth, Stephen Ellery in fifth, Mecklem in sixth, positions remaining fairly static, Rodney Forbes up inside the top ten now, Mark Larkham, Jason Richards, Paul Will, David Bernard just outside the top ten in 11th spot. Look, the yellow flag flying, somebody's gone oh, up, it's, it's Paul Romano. Romano understand that Greg Murphy's pretty irate and he's wandered back to his transporter. We probably saw a glimpse there of Greg Russ trying to get hold of him, but we'll catch up with Murphy a little bit later on and find out what happened. I think he was the car that got squeezed up on the left-hand side. Maybe Rob Crawford can shed some light for us. Well, I'm down in the pits here at the moment. It's all stations happening here at Kmart Racing. Rob Crawford, who we're going to have a word with, has just had to duck off because it looks like Todd Kelly might be coming in. Murph is uh, not really prepared to talk to us at the moment. He's damaged the steering quite badly. Must be pretty bad to upset Murph, mustn't it? Yeah, I think he was the one that was getting squeezed heavily down there in the first turn. That really is a case here, I think, particularly for a reverse grid race for a rolling start. And it's just so difficult to launch all these cars off the start-finish line and then bring them to a virtual stop at that first corner with guys that have got pace at the back. It's a very difficult thing for everybody to cooperate. There's Kelly coming in. Larry Perkins out of the race after two laps as well. Look at the oh, damage at here. This. Pit window is open and look at them all coming in. The first opportunity they get. Long, long, long line of cars. It's history repeating itself. They all fumble each other when they go through that process. This is what happened yesterday. The trouble is you get stuck in that queue, Neil, and you get that concertina effect as well. People further back in the queue are going to get held up a oh, lot more than the cars in front. The and he stalled it. He escaped. No, that was actually bright. Was that bright? Too. Yep. So Bright's come in before Scape this time around. Yesterday, Scape was first in. So Bright makes his first stop this time around. We get to oh, the jamming. Oh, how wow. close was that? Oh, that was the whole Brad Jones wasn't too pleased about that. Well, we were talking about the importance of the oh, car look at controller. The, front of Engels thing. the car controller making sure that he doesn't send his car out to a potential collision situation. Well, how close was that?
Engel looks like he sits on the other back or whatever. See how close and frantic it gets at that pit stop. Everyone knows how critical those stops are. You can even pick up one place and around this track that can be extremely valuable. Well, lap four of 25, the pit window has been opened. We've seen the first sequence of stops. We've got a jumbled order in this race already. Look at this replay. Now this is the oh. Jeff Gregg is the car controller on that oh. car. He's let it go and all of them. Look at that close. close that was. Well that required Jones to throw the brakes yeah. on and uh, everybody had to get out of the throttle in order for it to work. 40 Ks remember the speed limit in the pit lane now and uh, that certainly made things safer. I was talking to Jeff this morning about that very situation. He said, gee, it's a tough call when you're standing there. You obviously want to get your car out as soon as you can, but it's up to him. It's his responsibility to make sure he doesn't release the car into the path of another one. And you can imagine under the enormous pressures in pit lane, making that judgment call can be pretty tough. Fastest lap of the race so far, Paul Radisich. Paul was quickest in the morning warm-up. He did a 144 flat, which was very quick in cold conditions. Tyler Mecklen with a bit of smoke coming off the front of that thing. He's had a rub somewhere with something. Now, the order at the moment is still Steve Reed, McDougall, Larkham, Jason Richards, David Bernard, Jason Barguana, Paul Radisich, quick man on the track, McLean, Scaife and Lowndes in the 10. There's the leader. Remember, there's a race within a race here. The quick guys are at the back. Some have chosen to stop, some haven't. It'll be difficult to know how this whole event will unfold until after everybody's shaken out with their stops. Probably a good half or more of the field have stopped so far. Those that haven't include Lowndes, Scaife, Ambrose, other contenders, Paul Morris. Oh, oh Romano. So that's why we saw Paul Romano off. He had the ultra tune car there. Tuning him. <laughs> giving him a tune up. So if you look back in the pack, I think Stephen Richards, he's back in 17th in the overall order now. He's the front first of the cars that's made its compulsory stop. Stephen Richards back in 17th, so all the cars in front of him yet to stop. Look at this, getting hot and heavy here between Seaton and Brad Jones. Jones up the inside. No one wants to give way. Jones goes up on the curb. They're still side by side and very close to a collision with the concrete wall. And that uh, tan, the help tan. I think that was Seaton that was getting uh, the squeeze there and that something came off the car yeah, and Glenn's yeah. had his ears boxed in that manoeuvre. It's uh, twice in two days he's really come off second best. Now Jones being attacked by 34, which is Tander in the Valvoline car. And it gets so hectic, isn't it, now when they come out? Everyone just jostling for position. Just after they make that stop and the tyres aren't quite up to temperature, it's a crucial time. The car's got a little bit more grip than the other one. It's a good time to pounce. This is a pretty quick stop by the Nick Johnson racing team, but I can't remember pit lane being as frantic as it has been in this race today. Tyler Mecklen came in before with a flat right front tyre, and Stephen Johnson was tucked right in behind him on the 40k an hour speed limit. There was no room between them, and there's lots of cars, let me tell you, with panel damage. Mark Scaife is in pit lane now. You can just see the damage to the front of the number one car there. And, and twice in two days that Scape has had to get out of the throttle when he's left the pits to make way for other cars. Boy. I know that uh, there's some entertainment fours, but there's some sporting against mm. the reverse grid. Lap six of 25. We still haven't seen the full shakeout here to see who's on top. Steve Reed, meanwhile, continues to lead this race. Oh, look at this. Celery and Bernard. Bernard getting very sideways. Not sure if there was contact between himself and the super cheap autos machine, but he managed to gather it up. That was up at turn three, just at the back of Old Parliament House. Here's Bernard in behind Paul Radisich, who's just freshly completed that stop. He's on cold tyres. Stephen Richards slowly moving his way up the order. He is the first of the cars that's made its compulsory stop. He's in 13th now, but the field starting to come back to him. Still a number of cars in front of him that need to make their compulsory stops. Plenty of contact here. David Bernard pushing hard, trying to find a way past Paul Radisich. So we've just got a bit of a jumble here the next few laps. As this field sort themselves out. So this man was our race leader, Steve Reed. Meanwhile, the battle continues between Lowndes and Ambrose. They're stationed fourth and fifth on the road at the moment and yet to take their compulsory stop. This is a fascinating situation. We've just been looking at the timing monitor here. Lowndes is about 28 seconds in front of Stephen Richards. Stephen Richards is the first man to have made the compulsory stops. So this is going to be interesting if Lowndes can get in and out of the pits very quickly. He may well 
be able to get out pretty much at the time Stephen Richards comes oh, past. So watch Dougal that. McDougal. Dougal McDougal. Now, is this going to be a safety car? If it is, oh, almost certainly. This I'd is going to be a major problem for. Oh, oh look at this, David Bernard. Bernard. <laughs> Another car caught up in some drama here. So this is oh, and Lowndes has got in before the safety car came out. Oh. So that was the critical thing. Everyone was waiting. They're going to take a risk. It may have all come undone. Well, Can confirm that for you. The safety car board was not shown before Craig Lowndes entered pit lane. Had a word to Alan Heapy as well. They always plan to bring Craig in at a time when he has a good clear space out of the track to make some ground. Gee, this, now, this is going to be the fascinating yeah. thing. If we watch the wide shot at the end of pit lane here, we might get a shot of where Stephen Richards is relative to Craig Lowndes. No, uh, he's gone through. No, Richards he's already has gone just gone through. through. OK. But Lowndes is certainly going to make a great big net gain on the other contenders. Remember that Stephen Richards started with enormous track position advantages because of starting on the front row relative to all the guys that did well yesterday. Trying to, trying to see where he rejoined the track relative. He's, come, out, he's come in behind Larkham, so he's in uh, sixth on the road at the moment. No, fifth. Still Jason Richards and Marcus Ambrose to make their compulsory stops. And if he's managed to uh, squeeze that stop in before a potential safety car, then that will also give him another game. So he should be third, I think, by our calculations. By the time those other two guys make their compulsory stops, we'll... Ooh. Dougal McDougal wallops the wall down at Holden Corner, turns eight and nine, and it's a lot of damage to the front left. Momentary flame there, obviously a line's come off somewhere, fuel or oil. And uh, he may well have only just come out of the pit lane on cold tyres and uh, either has copped a bump from somebody or has had some other problem. Oh, Meanwhile, look at this battle here. Oh, oh it's a huge lock-up. Oh, oh, wow. Straight ahead. Oh, there He's you lost go. track position there in a huge way. And he's ended up with a tyre like a 50-cent piece. Geez, had think. trouble at that part of the track. Saw him really lock it up big time in the top 15 shootout yesterday. And now he's done it again on the... Oh, look, he's locking number of points around yeah. the circuit. Well, cold tyre, that's what it is. See, the, the brakes are hot, his rhythm is established in his mind, but the tyres are not yeah. up to the job on that opening lap. Well, provided he hasn't lost a position to one of the cars that have already made a compulsory stop, he should be third in the order by the time Ambrose and Jason Richards make their stops, because it'll be Stephen Richards, Mark Larkham, Craig Lowndes in third. That's if he hasn't lost another position, we're just confirming that for you. He certainly lost position to Bow okay. and to one of the Valvoline cars. You look at that car of Bernard's, there's been a real uh, bit of uh, bit of fighting going on there. I wonder if it was with Radisees, because they were pretty close together, weren't they? Well, we'll try and find out. We've got Grant and Greg in pit lane, and we'll get the boys on the job. Gee, there's some battle-scarred cars out there. Every second car that goes by has got a graunch or a scrape or a bit hanging off it. Now boy, our calculations, Ambrose rejoined in third place. He didn't get out in front of Larkham, so he's third in this order now. So that's a great fight back from the rear of the grid after not finishing the race yesterday. Quick time from Lowndes, 44-3, did a 44-7 yesterday. So again, he's proving the pace of the car. There's Ambrose. So he's gone out and hung on to track position. We saw McDougal go off before. And now oh, Larkham's Larkham. gone down there. OK. So he picks up another spot. So Ambrose has just capitalised on that problem with Larkham. Our cameraman must have known something. We were, <laughs> we were, we were ready for him to arrive. So the Pertec Ford picks up another spot. This has been a brilliant drive by Ambrose and good operation by the Stone Brothers Ford team to get him up into this strong position. Their strategy could have been affected even more by David Bernard's car. When David came into pit lane, they were not expecting him. Obviously, they told Marcus to stay out for an additional lap because under the revised rules, two car teams can only work on one car at a time. Yeah, I spoke to Marcus last night and he said, well, that's the only thing we've got on our plate. We have to take a risk. If we're going to come running from the back of the grid, we've got to try and push that safety car envelope and just hope the one doesn't come out. We're going to stay out on the track as long as we can while he's done it, and it's paid big dividends. Do you know, I was thinking that some... Um, with this reverse grid situation and with the narrowness of the circuit, I reckon there's a lot to be said for a rolling star with, uh, in order, you know, just sort of single file star. Because at least that way it, it uh, deletes any chance of carnage at the first corner on the first lap, and then well, they can sort themselves out, can't you, they? You, it's a pre mixed accident when you put yeah, the fast guys in no the back. Doubt and, uh, you know, they're all anxious to make position, and there's a lot of good reasons for that. And then they just cannon into the back of people, particularly down here. The problem is for Marcus Ambrose, of course, he's going to get the points earned from a good position in this race, but for the 50-lapper, he once again goes to the back of the field as a result of starting this race, as it did not finish in race one, they punish you for the rest of the weekend, so he's got to do it all again. In
in the 50 lap of this afternoon. So I think we can finally give you now a, a, a shaken out order as the debris flag is shown down there at turn eight. It is Stephen Richards leading from Marcus Ambrose, Jason Barguana, you can see them there on screen. Radisich, Lowndes in fifth, Bow, Paul Wheel, Mark Larkham after his small mistake. Steve Reed still oh, amongst it in ninth, and Richards yeah. makes a blue, <laughs> gathers it up. <laughs> and then Rodney Forbes is in tenth. Further back, contenders Scaife and Bright are eleventh and twelfth. Ingle is thirteenth, Tanda fourteenth. Then Jason Richards, McLean, Stephen Johnson is seventeenth. Todd Kelly, Glenn Seaton, Tony Longhurst, Brad Jones. Jeff, things have certainly turned around for the Blue Oval this weekend. I'm just looking at that top eight. I think Bhagwan is the only Holden in that top eight. They're all forwards. On board with Mark oh, Scaife, Scaife and... giving Rodney Forbes a wake-up call there. To, so, oops, oh! and another whack. Oh, oh, wow. So, Forbes had to get on the brake because somebody else in front of him had a moment, and uh, there was already damage to the front of the HRT Commodore after turn one, so that will further complicate issues at the front of the car. HRT didn't do well out of those stops. Mark Scaife's back in 11th, Jason Bright in 12th. They certainly got caught up in a few of those incidents. I just look at Ambrose, he's 13, no, 11, he was 13 seconds behind uh, Richards. And we hear on the radio that Mark Scape's coming in, he's got a problem with the left front tyre. This might be him now. Can you keep driving or not? No way. Oh, look at that. Yeah, look at the damage. <laughs> sending the information via oh. rail there. The radio's not uh, particularly strong around here with the number of overhead bridges and trees. He's coming to the pit lane. So costly damage to the front of Scape's car. We saw it on the replay. He got into the back of Rodney Forbes' car and Rodney propped for some other reason with somebody else in front of him. And this is really going to... First grid, but... Yeah, thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> we'll come back and have a chat to you later on. <laughs> Only trouble is, this is really going to hurt his starting position for the 50 lap of this afternoon. Keep in mind, it's based on an aggregate of your results from race one and race two. He gets a lousy finishing position here. It's really going to hurt his starting position for the final. He's going to be really lucky if he hasn't done the rad there. Yeah, Look at this damage. serious amount of damage. So lots of drama here in this second race. And we know Neil Crompton's thoughts about all this, but uh, <laughs> there certainly hasn't been a dull moment, gentlemen. Now you're right about that, Bill. The safety car has gone out onto the circuit. And just to qualify those remarks, I just have a problem with... Uh, with going into a race knowing that you're going to unfold so much damage and uh, the decisions to do these sorts of things are often taken by people who don't have to do the work on the cars. Or pay the bills. Or pay the bills. Ambrose is flying. He's by far the quickest, almost a second quicker than anybody else. He cut that down from 14 seconds to eight. Now with a safety car, he's going to be right some behind Right the there. There he is. There he is. Right behind our race leader, Stephen Richards. Marcus Ambrose on the Stone Brothers racing team. Done a terrific job to get him from last on the grid up to second. But keep in mind the rules here for the GMC 400. If you started the reverse grid race from the back of the grid as it did not finish you, you start again from the back for the 50 lapper. Just prior to that safety car coming out, Jim Stone got on the radio to Marcus and said, just take it easy. They knew he was setting those incredibly quick lap times and they thought in the latter stages of this race, they don't want anything to go wrong, just bring it home. And we hear from the pitch that Craig Lowndes is asking the Gibson Motorsport team why is the safety car on the track? He can't see an accident or a reason for the car to be out. Answers on a postcard. So it's interesting. Um, I haven't sat down to work out the, what's called the nominal point score, but uh, of the way that I would read yesterday's result plus the on-screen situation that we're looking at at the moment with the order, I'd say that Lowndes is uh, a chance to start on the front row. In fact, I think he'd be polled for race three. I was just running through that in my mind. So, uh, And I think Radisic by our sums here with uh, our statistician Nigel Greenway, it'll be Lowndes off pole, Radisic off second. So it's an all forward front row. Bargwiner off the inside of row two, he'll be third, and Johnson will start off four. Lights are off on the safety car, so we're going back to full green flag racing conditions. Keep in mind that the laps prior to this safety car coming out, Marcus Ambrose broke the lap record in the Pertec Ford, so he's really oh, been look flying. Look at the, look at the push that. and shove here as we get back to green. Stephen Richards defending on the inside. Marcus Ambrose ducks to the outside. Look at them hard under brakes in the turn one. We always get a bit of drama here. Oh, there you go. Oh, that's all. Lounds on the outside of, uh, I think it might have been Radisish there, but yeah, not like it. Thundering down toward the GMC flip-flop. Back at full speed. 
Marcus Ambrose trying to find a way around Stephen Richards, but Richards is wise to the push. Lowndes lost a place to Bow in all that because Bow's got in front of him. Look further down this order. There's the Valvoline car, Shell car, Cat car, and then Lowndes. So he's actually dropped a spot in that restart. Down through Holton Turn, swing on to Kings Avenue. Field push their way up towards State Circle. Hard on the break. Stephen Richards looking well in command here, but Marcus Ambrose filling the mirrors of the FTR Ford. Castro holding in behind them. As they sweep under Parliament House, 240 kilometres an hour on the approach to Turn 11. That's hard on the brakes. We've seen lots of cars locking their brakes here. Mark Scape is still stuck in pit lane. The Holden Racing Team are going to try and get this car to finish. If they can just get it to finish, it's going to keep him off the back row of the grid. He's still going to, he's still going to be starting a long way back, guys, you'd imagine, by the time they've done the, the points. That's amazing, hasn't um, broken the rad. So, hard under brakes at the end of Flint Place. In just turn 13, Stephen Richards, oh, look at Paul, Paul Morris, Morris having along the inside oh, of Perkins. Perkins! And he's turned Perkins around. Oh, dear. So, Larry was one of the lap cars there. Got caught up in the big push. Now he's got to let the field go through. He's not having a good weekend, Larry. See just a small section of the big crowd that's gathered here today. The uh, sun's now coming out. It, uh, it's going to be a fabulous day's racing, and there's a lot of interest in Canberra for the event. Tremendous sightseeing around here and some great shots that we've seen. And there's Scape rejoining the pack. Many, many laps down now and with a heavily disabled car, but they're doing everything they can to make sure that they can get on that grid for race three and not be at the back. Keep in mind, Paul Morris is a lap car in this battle as well. Scope's pulled up to let all the traffic go by. It's probably more courtesy than a technical problem. There's Lowndes applying pressure to the back of Bow. He lost the spot in the restart. So, what a race. Amazing up and down. Number of position changes as a result of this reverse grid. But Paul Morris is a lap car here. So the rest of the cars behind him are battling for position. Stephen Richards and Marcus Ambrose have gone through. That's intriguing by hands of Stephen Johnson. He's down in 13th place. He's, uh... So here's Jason Bargwana. He's running in third, but he's trying to find a way past Morris, who is a lap car. So Ooh. That won't make Larry too happy, I don't think. Well, there were both lap cars, in fact. Oh, and then, and Paul and then everybody sort of does a nose-to-tail job in Turn 13 as a result of that. Have a look at this from another angle. Just turn the back of the Castrol car around. It doesn't take much of a tap. You can probably... I think there's barely a mark on the back bumper of Larry's car, but uh, it was enough to turn him around. Into the closing competitive laps of race two at the GMC 400. What an eventful race. Let's take a look at why we are here in this situation. And they're trying to get some heat into those tyres. Brad Jones. This is the first of two incidents that took him out of the race. Little lose there, bit of damage. Two other cars in trouble. But it's curious that so many cars went off there, Bill, because there must have been something on the road. And then here's the one that finished Brad Jones off. Tangles with his old teammate from the Audi days, Cameron McConville, wallops the wall, and it brings the safety car out. So that's where we are now, and a tricky spot there, of course. Absolute must to bring the safety car out in that situation. On the sweeper into the main straight, and plenty of debris there as well, hanging off the car. In fact, uh, McConville did pretty well, given the traffic around him, to avoid that spoiler. Now, hard to believe the high level of carnage in this race, Kim, I suppose. Yeah, um, it's a beautiful town, beautiful race, but today's not going to be our day. We're sitting up against the wall. Um, the reverse grid, well, we play by the rules, somebody else makes them, but maybe with a, with a week before we leave to go to Perth, um, this isn't a good idea. There's been a lot of carnage. Uh, you have slow people at the front of the field on a circuit that's very, very difficult to pass, and because they're at the front, their adrenaline's running, they think that they're in, a, in with a chance. Um, and when you get faster cars coming up behind and trying to go around them, the smallest of error, and you're in the wall like we are now. You also had some problems in pit lane too. Yeah, the, the pit lane is a very dangerous spot with all the pit stops that go on, and um, Avesco and Race Control have been in trying to enforce the fact that we have to be safe. The car controller shouldn't let cars out, and we had an incident where we were in the fast lane, another car was let out of the pit box, and Bradley had to brake. Uh, that's recipe for uh, an accident, and for the people in the crew who have got nothing to do with being in a dangerous position, getting hurt.
bad day down here for the Aussie Mail Falcon. Thanks, Kim. Thanks very much. Also had a situation where Paul Morris was given a stop-go penalty for his contribution to the Larry Perkins uh, turnaround. The lights are out on the safety car. There's the situation. Air temperature 13, so the temperature's come up 5 degrees, 6 degrees since we last mentioned it. Track temp 15, 25 degrees inside the office for Marcus Ambrose. And if they go racing on this lap, which they will, there'll be two laps to run. Yeah, it's not going to give Ambrose much time to get past Stephen Richards, is it? It's, uh... This is this first lap, though, is when people try to pounce. They just try and get a little bit of an advantage. The car in front maybe hasn't got quite the same amount of grip or whatever. They'll try and see what opportunity they got. But they've got to be... They've got to keep cool heads, these two at the front. They've done very well out of this reverse grid race. They've both bagged a big chunk of points. So it'd be a real shame if they ended up against the wall or threw them all away right at the end. So you've got to be aggressive, but you've also got to keep you cool. Yeah, plus the fact the Stone Brothers are told Ambrose, make sure if you're going to get past, you leave enough room. So uh, I don't know that he's going to get past. No, he was nibbling very hard in the uh, in the laps prior to the safety car come out. and. Uh, and Stephen was showing that he had some car pace and was certainly up to the job. We know he is because he was last year's round winner. He's had a couple of wins at Bathurst. He's a, a, a hard, tough, fast pro in his own right. So uh, Marcus might have a tiny edge on speed, but I don't know whether that's going to be enough to get by. Barbs is going good, isn't he? Third place. This is encouraging stuff for the Stone Brothers team, though, because this is they've been ma managed to get Marcus up from last on the grid to second in a 25 lap <laughs> with okay, go one go compulsory it. stop. We've got a 50 lapper coming up with two compulsory stops. So that's two opportunities to do a leapfrog. I wouldn't be surprised if you saw this guy oh. somewhere near the pointy end of the grid after 50 laps as well. Have a go at that time. Oh, look at that. 144.18. New, new lap record. That's down in the qualifying realm. We saw them do high 43s in qualifying. So that's extraordinary speed and that decimates the next quickest time. It's very, very fast, this young man. 24 years of age, Marcus Ambrose. He really has set the V8 supercar world on fire since he's been here. Just on that subject, that next quickest time, Lowndes 44.5, so he's peeled three and a half, nearly four tenths out of that. Last lap for our race leader, Stephen Richards. 3.9 kilometres remaining for the Ford Tickford Racing Driver. And the Stephen Richards was the overall winner of the inaugural GMC 400 last year. Driving for the Gibson Motorsport Kmart team. There's Steve's wife, Angela, watching on from pit lane. There's no way Ambrose is going to have a go, is there? I mean, it's it's the sensible thing to do just to to um, sit tight. And... Well, the thing is, Baz, no matter what he does, he has to start from the back of the grid in race yeah. three. <laughs> as, as a result of starting this race, as a did not finish it from race one. It's a pretty tough rule. Fiberglass and sparks flying as they go through that enormous dip in the road. The camber change past Parliament House. Oh, look look at the aggro back in the pack. Trap and Romano. I think the Stone Brothers team will be pretty encouraged by that. Here's Mark Scaife. Magic tape strapped all over the bonnet. They just want to get this car through so he's classified as a finisher. Try and get himself a reasonable starting position for the 50 lapper. This year, points are awarded to everybody in the field, all 32. Look at the front oh, left is locked up on Richards. <laughs> Sending smoke signals, oh, there's a mistake. That's an there. invitation for Ambrose down the inside as they come down here. Puts him in a, an awkward no, position for 12, enough. but no, he recovers the situation. Pressure. Marcus is aware of this situation. He's very well placed in the Shell Championship Series points. He was fourth coming into this one. Only. Five points ahead of Greg Murphy in fifth, but well placed in fourth. He knows he's got to get maximum points here. This is going to be a good haul, even though he starts from the back of the grid. Look at the rear brakes on Ambrose, all locked up and slithered into the corner. He just absolutely gave it everything. One corner to run. Points it up toward the Ford XR8 sweeper for the final time. All good over day Red for, Rover. Good day for Ford so far. 1-2 in race one. It's going to be a 1-2 in race two, and Stephen Richards oh, is going to bring it home for the Blue Oval. Marcus Ambrose in second. Jason Bargwana had a big run at the end, but couldn't quite get there. Paul Radisic, John Bow, Craig Lowndes, well placed as well. As the field come across after an eventful full reverse grid race two at the GMC 400. Most of the cars coming through OK, but there's been a lot of damage up and down through the field. Marcus Ambrose, hasn't he worked hard today? And he's got to do it all again this afternoon off the back of the grid. But well done, Stephen Richards. Signed for the Ford Tickford Racing Team at the commencement of this year. And he's done a sterling job on the streets of Canberra today.